wanted to make it in a place as magical as Colombia, and it's delivering. Obviously, the locations are amazing. I mean, we shot in the Congress. That was amazing. Like, I'm driving through this, and it's like French countryside in Colombia, but in the paintings of a long, long time ago. That is a great incentive to come to Colombia because you can really, I think, make the most of what you have and show so much more on screen. Lo más interesante realmente es la creatividad y lo que nuestras miradas pueden aportar a narrativas diferentes alrededor del mundo. Hola, muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos a este webinar. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, webinar, Cine Negotiation and News. Let me remind you that there is an interpretation service. If you find the icon, uh, the world icon on the bottom of your menu, you'll find the channels, you get to choose your channel. This was organized by, with the support of the Film Institute and Pro Colombia and the Ministry of uh, Science. So not only in the coordination of this event, but also in the development of the booklet and the decree that is the result of all the work uh, for these incentives. I'm, I'm Simon, I manage uh, the investment of creative industries here in Colombia, in Bogota, Colombia. Invest in Bogota is an agency, investment agency. It's a public-private association between the Bogota Chamber of Commerce and uh, Invest in Colombia. Our mission is to promote investments here in the economic center, which is Bogota. And it's uh, very well located because of, of that is that uh, we um, are more than happy to support uh, investments that come and land here. Without further ado, I'll give the floor to Carla. I'm sure you all know her. And then we will hear from Jaime Denorio. He is the Director of Audiovisuals and Cinema from the Ministry of Culture and Silvia Echeverri, Director of uh, the Film Commission here in Colombia. She's going, they, she's going to explain what uh, CINA is and how it works. Carla, welcome. Thank you, Simon. I'm not gonna take uh, a lot of time. I just wanna thank you all for uh, all the Colombian um, officers for giving us this space to interact and reflect with you. Thank you for organizing this webinar. It was uh, very important for the film studios, the movie studios, we at the MPA, and the cities that we represent are very happy to be here sitting with you and having this webinar. And I particularly wanna thank Silvia, Simon and Jaime because we have worked together for many, many weeks to try to put this event together. And Julie also MPA, thank you very much. They, they've been weeks and weeks of organizing. Welcome everybody, welcome. Many conversations uh, like this, so we can engage in in future projects with uh, the Colombian government. Jaime, el piso es tuyo. Jaime, the floor is yours. You may begin. Buenos días. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, everybody. Carla, Julie, eh, un saludo muy especial para, para los Warm Pictures Association. Welcome for, to the MPA and to all the companies that you uh, represent and to my colleagues, uh, Pro Imágenes Colombia, and of course, uh, the people at Invest in Bogota, who have helped us a lot. Estos, estos incentivos 
que se han mantenido a lo largo we, del tiempo. We love to show you these incentives that have made Colombia in one of the um, in one of the hubs for the movie industry in the continent. Why invest in Colombia? In a way, we have had a sustained policy over the last few years. First, we had the movies law that developed the national um, the national industry. That law is from 2003, and from filming maybe one, two, three movies, we uh, then went to start filming more than 40. Uh, we also implemented some incentives for investors, all the people that have grown throughout time with us. And that has allowed us to, um, to pass a new law, the 15-112, uh, that allows people to have great productions and we also got uh, qualifications in the technical crews. Uh, we have many well-prepared uh, staff, human resources in Medellin, in many other cities um, who actually supply this type of services, audiovisual services. And also we have um, diverse locations with a lot of infrastructure and also the, the, the institutional support that is continues as permanent and all this combination made this industry uh, to boost the economic uh, environment in around this. The 15-516 law, 1566, I'm sorry, um, has promoted the movie industry, but now these incentives can go to not only movies, but serious uh, musical videos, video games, advertisements, and uh, uh, content uh, series for websites. The fund, on the one hand, this law, 1556, creates the um, Colombian Film Fund that provides services to the uh, where 20% of all the values of the costs uh, that that we have in Colombia in audiovisuals with Colombian companies. And this, as I said, has helped to thrive with the, in the, the industry in Colombia and the companies in Colombia. And on the other hand, we have 20% of the value of hotel expenses, food and transportation. Apart from the uh, Colombian Film Fund, we also have SINA, which are the certificates of audiovisual investment in Colombia. In this case, the foreign investor can negotiate these certificates with individuals or with legal entities um, that must pay rent in Colombia, may, must pay taxes sorry, in Colombia. The, the foreign producer who produces in Colombia can have this benefit. And to tell you that the cap that we've had for the certificate last year, we had $65 million on uh, investment projects. And this year we went up and we put it at $150 million on investment projects as benefits for foreign producers. The benefit is 35% of the value of the investment that they make in Colombia. We discounted it from the uh, tax, uh, the VAT tax um, from their uh, costs. So it's important to have, okay, we need uh, the, the transference of, um, of the certificate is not transferable and it does not constitute a tax income in Colombia. So the certificate may be totally negotiated in the stock market or it can be transferred by endorsement um, by the production company that owns the audiovisual project and up to 5% of the nominal value of the certificate they receive may be used to cover administrative costs of the evaluation and monitoring system. Out of the total amount of money that they spent between 2020 and 2021, they spent $780,000 million, about $206 million, uh, and the staff employed between 2020 and 2021 they have been almost 5,000 people uh, direct. This is direct employment. On the other hand, we've seen 
a, an important growth between last year and this year. And this incentive was applied um, at the end of the year, last quarter of the year. We've approved already 30 projects and through the Film Fest Fund, uh, nine projects. And so within this classification, there are five movies, one TV film, 16 series, 12 mini series, and nine reality shows. So with you know the government, we're really happy because of the success that Cena has had uh, in terms of in terms of incentive and and we feel that it's a huge step for us so who are the beneficiaries on the one hand the uh, national audiovisual producers uh, you as international companies you surely come hand in hand with a national audiovisual producer on the other hand the foreign the, the foreign audiovisual producer is also one of the beneficiaries of these incentives the the service companies and supply companies and the income tax uh, filers in Colombia are the ones uh, that benefit from this. So another thing that has been important was the that now it's easier for everybody to apply to this type of benefits. So we break barriers and we have more national uh, industry developed here. So there are services for the audiovisual production that are exempt from the VAT. We um, make it easier for them to process the, the visas. We are also regulating for the work of um, minors in the film industry. We are also making it, making it easier for the temporary import and export of elements and equipment. And we also have a protocol um, in place for loans of the armed forces. This has been a joint work of many government organizations to try to promote, um, you know, Proimagenes has been one of our main allies. And now uh, this, um, this booklet that will be uh, explained by Silvia, where you have all the procedures and Pro-Colombia and Invest in Bogota have been really uh, of great help for us, plus other ministries that are connected to development, to the development of the industry, uh, the creative industry here in Colombia. So once again, I apologize. I have to uh, leave. I have another meeting, uh, but I am following this up closely with the MPA, uh, Laura, Silvia, um, and Simon. Carla, they will all uh, stay here to answer any questions that you may have. Silvia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, to our great ally, Pro Imagines Colombia. Thank you, Jaime. Well, a pleasure for me to be once again with you here, presenting this new booklet that we wanted to put together. I think most of you must have the first booklet in your hands. We put it together um, at Pro Imagenes with the support of the Ministry uh, of, of um, Culture and Pro Colombia. We're going to give you the links anyways um, for you to access the two documents that we created, we put together both in English and Spanish. We think it's an important element to try to simplify the processes, as you all know. They may be a little bit complex at times. I want to thank once again the MPA for your great interest in Colombia, for organizing this webinar. Without a doubt, they um, they really promote what they, what we all want to see promoted, which is the movie industry here. Pro Colombia invests in Bogota. Thank you very much. You're always supporting us in all the promotional activities that we have. And the Ministry of Culture, I want to tell you that it's an entity that we work very uh, much hand in hand. We are completely articulated. And I think that's very important to, to mention and that will definitely cascade within the process. So there is a huge uh, connection between um, uh, the, Columbia, um, the Colombian Film Fund, 
and ProColombia. In the country, we have something called ProImagenes Colombia. It's like an umbrella entity that has been in, in, in place for many years, since 1998, working with the audiovisual industry here in Colombia. This is our booklet. We're going to be sending you this, uh, Camila, next slide. So some pictures of all the productions that we've had in Colombia. I'm going to perhaps repeat the information that Jaime gave you, but I think it's important since it's such a technical thing, it's very important to make sure that law 1556 of 2012 uh, was changed at the end of last year. In the ch These changes went towards making these incentives more um, a broader, not only for the movies, but um, we also want to now do it, uh, we, we, apart from the cash rebate, now transfer, transferable cash rebate, we want to make a new incentive, which is a, a transferable tax credit, which we call SINA, and that we are going to take a look at right now. So now incentives do not only apply to the movies, but also to serious music videos, video games, and advertisements. Next. Entonces, entremos a ver qué so es let's go chico. and now take a look what the Certificate of Audiovisual Investment in Colombia is. Transferable tax so credit. It's a transferable tax credit, as you know it, uh, in your... Um, in your vernacular internationally. So they are marketable securities. You can trade them in the stock exchange that um, are equivalent to the 35% of the expenses of foreign audiovisual productions uh, in the Colombian territory. These costs must be services, whether it's logistics, hotel, food, catering, um, transportation, any other service that you hired here in Colombia to make a movie. Uh, CINAs are transferable to uh, people who pay uh, income tax here in Colombia, and they may be used to apply a discount in the payment of that discount or in the payment of uh, the withdrawals. So in Colombia, companies must, every two months, they must uh, submit a sworn statement of all their incomes and to have withholdings over those that over that amount of money that they have as income. So the, those companies can use this uh, CINAS to pay for those withdrawals or to pay income tax, which is a uh, tax that people, individuals and, and companies must pay once a year. Next. So what are the characteristics of SINA? SINAs are freely negotiated uh, securities that are issued in the name of the foreign producer who is responsible for the audiovisual project. So as you all know, there is a process in which the foreign producer nominates um, a project, uh, proposes a project, and once that process is over, that certificate is issued in their name, in the foreign producer uh, producer's name, the person who made the proposal. The nominal value is um, equivalent to 35% of the value of the investment made in Colombia. By the decision of the Ministry of Culture, those CINAs are issued in a dematerialized form. That is, they're not physical papers. You're not gonna get uh, a paper but they're put in electronically in a file, in a folder, and they can be negotiated in the secondary market or transferred to uh, individuals, uh, legal entities that declare income tax in Colombia. They can be used with a maximum uh, term of two years from the, from the moment they're issued. The holder of that certificate can use it partially or totally before their maturity or before their deadline. So if you have a CINA, CINA for a specific value, you don't have to apply all of that amount to pay taxes. They may use it uh, partially. And as I said before, 
para el pago de autos. They're good to pay uh, withdrawals of income tax or, Como decía, or the VAT. As Jaime said before, the income from the transfer of the certificate is not subject is not subject to withholdings at a source in the country and does not constitute tax income in Colombia. That is, when the foreign uh, company receives uh, the income of that for the sale of that SINA, uh, they won't have to pay absolutely any tax at all. The maximum amount of SINA that can be awarded in a year is defined every year by the Colombia Film Promotion Committee, the CPFC, the one that approves this, uh, the projects that will be beneficiaries of this benefit. Uh, this is the previous requirement that the foreign producer needs to do in order to apply for it. This is all in the booklet that we put together uh, and we have modified and changed in a summarized way. Well, it starts with uh, an application of the project. We ap they apply to the project to Pro Imagines Colombia. That's where the film committee works. We uh, evaluate all the documents. We assess all the documents. Then uh, the promotion committee approves of it. It's presided by the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism. And we have also the Ministry of Culture, Pro Colombia, some representative of the presidency and people who represent the film industry in our country. Once the incentive is approved, we sign a contract with Pro Imagines Colombia. Uh, it's called the Colombia Filming Contract. Uh, all of that needs to be done in a fiduciary here in our country. Then the production develops the project and at the end there is a credit space where we must hire an auditing company in our country that according to some procedures that we have agreed with them they define and then determine whether all the the terms and conditions were uh, complied with for the producer to receive the incentive finally pro imagines colombia issues a certificate uh, that al Ministerio de is uh, addressed to the Ministry of Culture. Eh, aquí entonces ya viene el so proceso. here, the process of negotiation begins for the producers to start using the CINAS. This booklet, we divided it in, in two parts. So, the negotiation and use process of the CINAS is divided in those two chapters. The first one is selling that CINA. The foreign producer sells it through a broker, a stock broker. And the second is the use of the beneficiary in Colombia that acquires CINAS, CINAS to pay for their taxes, whether it's a, an individual or a company. So let's explain both those both phases. Um, so the first stage starts with, okay, SINA is issued, the Ministry of Culture issues the SINA. That's why I mentioned that there is this close relationship that the Film Committee Commission has with the Ministry of Culture because this is where the process begins. So the, the Ministry of Culture issues the SINA then the SINA is received by the broker and the SINA sale by the foreign producer, the purchase of by the Colombian beneficiary and the use of SINA to pay income tax or self-withholdings. So we're going to go and, and see each one of these steps and what they mean in this process. So the first one is when the SINA is issued, it's issued by the Ministry of Culture, as I said before, uh, in the in the name of the uh, on behalf of a, the beneficiary foreign producer. The decibel is the one that manages the quota with the amount that is issued annually for those certificates. The ministry then sends a notification to the foreign producer uh, to tell that person that they are now beneficiaries of the SINA. The foreign producer will know when Pro Imagines 
send the um, the certificate to the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Culture will also notify them that SINA was finally issued. So the CEVAL, what is the CEVAL? It's um, the Centralized Security Depository of Colombia. Um, it's the main subsidiary of the Colombian Stock Exchange and is key uh, as part of the Colombian equities market. So what they do is they facilitate the issuance of securities and other financial instruments that are registered in the National Registry of Securities and Issuers. Um, it has uh, different roles, like they, they do custody, administration, and settlement of securities for individuals, for companies, for investors, and for all financial agents inside and outside the country. Of course, um, they manage the CINAS in... Uh, um, in the, the CEVAL has several benefits, such as their, they reduce the physical risk on the securities so that they are not lost. Uh, doing it through Deceval also eliminates the handling, the verification, and the control of the issued physical security securities. It eliminates the risks that are inherent to the alteration of securities during the issuance of, and transactions. It avoids fraud and risks that uh, result from forgery and adulteration of security. It also eliminates administrative processes. It allows security and quality in the information, and it... Um, it sends all the information on the transactions in the primary or secondary market to the Ministry of Culture. I think this last point is very important. I think that is going to be one of the questions that you may ask uh, at the end of this presentation. So what kind of discounts will I have on the, on the CNAS, on the certificates? Once I sell it, how much are they going to retain as a discount? And let me tell you in advance that since this is a new process, where for now we have issued a few INAS, we still don't know enough information to make sure and to give you faithful information about how much the, the retention is, how much... Um, they retain as commission for selling the CINAS. Uh, I think we will have better inf statistical information later on as more CINAS are issued. Uh, so we, we need to wait and see how the market behaves. So the second step, which is the reception of the CINA by the broker, the broker firm or, or another direct depositor. So for the foreign uh, uh, producer can actually transfer those CINAS to the uh, buyer, they must do it through either a direct depositor, that is an entity in the financial Colombia, in the Colombian financial sector. It could be the CEVAL um, that I just explained. They, they take care of everything. Or it could be another firm, another broker's firm, um, a bank or, or a fiduciary. So this eval, what it does is they create an identification code of that broker firm and that code must be uh, indicated to the broker firm so that they register the foreign producer with that same identification number. The Ministry of Culture then requests the foreign producer a certificate that proves their relationship with the stockbroker that represents them or that uh, you know broker firm in order to make the exchange of the depositor in the Deceval under the name of the Ministry of Culture. And that way they can deliver the CINA. The Ministry of Culture records this certificate in the National Securities Registry. This registry belongs to the Colombian uh, uh, government and to the uh, Financial Superintendent uh, Superintendent's Office. Then the stockbroker will receive the CINA in favor of the foreign uh, producer. And from that moment on, the security is ready to be negotiated, to be traded. 
tercer paso, que es so the la third venta. part now comes uh, selling the cena the foreign producer sells the cena so the foreign producer sells it to either individuals or legal entities declaring income tax in colombia in the secondary market through uh, a broker firm a broker firms by uh, a system called master trader for their intermediate for that intermediary work the brokers can apply a discount of about 10 percent that is usually the number uh, that's the magic number that we'll see how much that really is we we don't have a lot of as i said we don't have a lot of um, information yet because cenas are rather new in the market but that it's a, usually around 10 percent of the nominal value we have to see how that behaves in time so that uh, will also depend on the conditions of the market at the moment of the negotiation and the trade. I'm going to show you also a simulation that we have done of this process. Um, it's important to take into account that the income tax in Colombia for legal entities is, is uh, paid in the first months of the year, January or February. So the behavior of this discount of those sinas goes down the um, the value of those sinas goes down at the beginning of the year because we will have a higher demand for the sinas it's also possible for the the foreign producer to sell the sina through an um, over-the-counter market sale uh, that it reports this about without having an intermediary such as the banking system or the stock market. So uh, the foreign producer will not have to necessarily sell the CINA, CINA through a broker. They could do it perhaps an over-the-counter market sale, like more direct. Some companies have asked if they have, uh, for example, if they have a subsidiary in a branch in Colombia, if they could transfer that security to their subsidiary, to their branch, sorry, in Colombia, and yes, it is possible to do that. They can definitely transfer those securities that that Sina uh, in that way. So the next step now is the Colombian beneficiary purchases the Sina once they go. The, the the producer gets a client to buy the Sina. This Colombian beneficiary buys Sina from uh, the uh, from the foreign uh, producer, they can do it th by trading in the secondary market or through an over-the-counter sale. The Colombian beneficiary can sell the Sina again to other individuals or legal entities declaring income tax, or they can use it to pay their own taxes. If the intention of the Colombian beneficiary is to use it, then they must request to the broker uh, to to change the depositor from the stockbroker to a bank that they will where they will do the operation so this qr code here we will be updating continuously updating all the offices around the net, the, the country that will accept payment of taxes with cena and the last step, which is the use of SINA to pay income tax or to do self-withholdings, the bank, according to the instructions of the new holder, sends the decival all the information um, about payments of taxes with SINA. This has to be done at least two days before the due date of the tax to be paid. It's not automatic. Uh, we need to give some time to the bank for the bank to do um, all the changes of the direct depositor. The bank in that case issues and delivers the holder a certificate that um, makes it legitimate. Um, and then, well, the payment is finally done, whether it's the income tax or the self-withholding. At that moment, that security is canceled. The CEVAL cancels that SINA. The only way SINA can be canceled is by doing this tax payment, whether, as I said, whether it's income tax or the self-withholding uh, tax. 
del de certificado. On and of course before the deadline or the due date of that certi security or certificate. So first we need to request the bank if in any case the holder must carry out the um, in any case they have to do the following uh, procedure. First request the certificate from the bank uh, who is a direct depositor, go to the branch authorized by the bank and pay the tax, and then request the payment to the bank so that uh, it requests to the Ministry of Culture and the Disability to cancel the security or impact the balance in the system. Here we have a simulation now. We Let's suppose that the foreign producer uh, paid a million dollars in our country in terms of costs. The SINA discount, as we said before, is 35%. So they will have a SINA with a nominal value of $350,000. As Jaime said, the producer needs to make a contribution before that certificate is issued to Grey Imágenes Colombia. That contribution is about 5% of the incentive. In other words, $17,500. And then the incentive value minus the contribution to the foreign producer, of the foreign producer to the SINA system is um, $332,500. Market discount rate between 15, 10 or 5%, you know, that will give us an idea of how much um, we will get. So this is the SINA compared to the complete value, uh, which will finally end up being whether 28, 30 or 32. We will have to see how that those SINAs markets, um, uh, you know, when, when trading them more and more, uh, how they behave, we, you know, we'll see what how that goes. But how that goes. But what happens with those sinas? So those sinas that were three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, depending on the um, on the on the um, discounts and the market discount rate they get, will be between two hundred and eighty thousand or to three hundred and fifteen thousand. Um, so then they will be and then they will get the the buyer will get a discount that goes between five and eighteen percent depending on how they use that um that certificate we have a glossary inside our booklet where we usually include all the terms all the the words that we use here and well that was my presentation thank you very much we want to leave you all this information, my my contact information and, and Camila, because you can contact us anytime you have have a question, you can contact me. Silvia y Jaime, muchísimas gracias. Eh, Silvia, por esta... Jaime, thank you very much for your presentation. I think it's really value valuable. Whatever everything you've said. And as Silvia said, we are now open for questions and answers. Uh, would you like to begin with one question, Camila? Quizás en lo que nuestros asociados se preparan con alguna pregunta. As as our members get ready, Carla, speaking, I can do some follow up questions. Para ti, Silvia, y one a couple for you, and I'd also like to uh, add one more. Uh, for Laura, maybe Laura can answer on behalf of Jaime about his presentation. Um, a couple of questions. Can I negotiate, can I trade SINA without a, a broker? And who are the ones that are um, authorized to be brokers? And Laura, Jaime mentioned a few things regarding additional services that you are working on, on the incentive. Uh, he mentioned, for example, helping visas, the process of, of visas, um, uh, making it easier to import and export uh, of equipment for movie filming, movie making, and also uh, lending the armed forces. Um, it, it, on that list, he also mentioned something about regulation, working uh, the, the um, 
children's uh, labor, uh, specifically about children's uh, labor. How is that going? And while that is being solved, how can uh, movie making companies have better conditions on their regulations when they, when, you know, regarding children's um, labor? Thank you, Carla. So I'm going to start answering the questions. It is not necessary to negotiate to trade the cinema through a broker. The foreign producer can find a, a buyer directly over the counter, as we call it. They just need to be uh, an individual or a company that pays income tax in our country. As I said in my presentation, it could also be um, a branch of this company that they have in our country or any other that exists in Colombia. However, Sina has a novelty. They can be traded in the stock exchange, Colombian stock exchange. And we are trying to do that so that we give them, give those certificates more market to be traded. So the, the stock exchange gives us the great, the best demand um, of our certificate, trying to make the discounts as little as possible. Uh, so by doing it through a broker firm, uh, then you have all of these clients in the stock exchange who are always looking for the best uh, trades and the best operations to, to maximize their profits by paying less taxes. So they, uh, you know, they can buy in a very efficient way all the buyers for the certificates. The broker, the broker firms are regulated by our financial um, ministry and in the website of the financial superintendent, uh, intendant's office, um, you have a list. We're going to include in this booklet also the list of all the authorized broker firms um, so that they, you know who you can use uh, to trade those uh, certificates. Thank you, Silvia. I'm going to continue with Carla's questions. First, uh, let me give you important information regarding this point. For this administration, um, we uh, the, the the movie industry is a strategic interest industry so it has a different um a differential treatment and the idea is to bridge the gaps so that there is more growth of the industries of the industry so the presidents the president in the country have formed a lot of uh, work teams that have identified the gaps that need to be bridged and and those gaps are the ones that you mentioned the first one is the armed forces uh, the lo loan and regulation for the use of the ministry of defense elements that includes includes the armed forces and then we have a resolution, the resolution 0733. That resolution creates an audiovisual committee in the Ministry of Defense. And there is a procedure through which audiovisual productions can apply and obtain their elements, location, even personnel of the defense ministry, the Department of Defense. With regards to uh, the import and export of equipment related to the audiovisual industry. This year, in July, we had the great news that the Colombian Congress um, approved um, a, a clause in the Istanbul, Istanbul um, Agreement, and the Canada is like a like credential for that equipment. So the Congress approved the entry into the country of those equi of, of, of equipment who have that certification. And at the end of the year, we'll uh, start ap applying that regulation. But well, the idea is to make it easier for all audiovisual productions. Um, and not only good for the cultural area or industry, but also for other um, other industries as well. 
when you talked about um, children's labor, the work of children in Colombia, we also have a resolution that we are um, we passed, but we are receiving comments about that because it's still a bill that needs to be passed to become a law. Um, once we get all the committee, the, all the comments on that bill, and we get all the the input on that on that um, on, on that bill, uh, the finally the law will be passed so as to regulate uh, children's labor in in the movie industry. The idea is to facilitate um, the production of um, movies in our country and uh, to to make sure that the producers feel that they have um, government support to to make those um, things happen. Let me remind you that in order to ask your questions, you you can you have a, a bottom on the, on the bottom menu you can raise your hand and you can speak up we're gonna read one of the questions that is in the chat Cida Vecina says what is the timeline since the application to trade the Cena up to the moment we finally sell it what is the timeline From the moment that the SINA is issued by the Ministry of Culture, they have two years, according to the regulation in the decree, to trade it. You have two years to trade that uh, certificate. We need to have a very clear timeline before that. In the moment that Pro Imagenes receives from the producer all the documents uh, to apply for that certificate. Uh, once the, the foreign producer sends us all the documents, what we do is we review all the documents. Uh, we have 10 business days to give them our feedback. In general, we make comments, we ask questions um, within those 10 days. That process, um, uh, that process is done between with the producers do it together with the brokers the, or the broker firms. And so it takes about a month to get that uh, application ready and finished. So once they we get uh, all that information and it's all approved, we issue the certificate to the Ministry of Culture. The Ministry of Culture has three weeks to issue the SINA, and from that moment, it's valid for two years. Okay, thank you, Silvia. Ramiro, you have a question. Go ahead. Good morning, warm regards, and thank you, Simon, 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 Laura, um, Laura and uh, Silvia. A question for a, a a Colombian taxpayer. I understand that the certificate is valid for two years from the moment it is issued. Let's suppose that today, November 3rd, we issue the a certificate, a SINA is issued, and the Colombian person that buys that is somehow limited to using that certificate to satisfy their or to pay for their taxes for the 2021 year or so in other words can they use it 2021 because there are two parts in this one is the part of the self withdrawals that we do it uh, every two months perhaps you can put november and december together and and pay for taxes then for those self withdrawals but if they want to pay um, their income tax, that is yearly, it's an yearly tax. Um, do they have two years to pay for that? Um, can we use it uh, in 2021, 22, 23? I mean, how does that work, especially when we're talking about uh, using them for uh, the tax, the income tax that is paid yearly? Ramiro, nice to see you again. Actually, if the, a certificate is issued in 2021, this year, 
that certificate is good to pay taxes, income tax or self withdrawals for 2021. What happens is in Colombia, I don't know if in the US it's the same, the 2021 taxes are paid in 2022. So the companies will be paying their taxes in 2022. So that certificate that was issued in 2021 uh, in 2022, when they are actually uh, paying income tax for the 2021 uh, fiscal year. So ideally, and uh, without any delays, you should pay your taxes, your 2021 taxes in 2022. But there are some companies and some individuals that perhaps don't pay for them for whatever reason, for the problem in the cash flow, for instance, and they can pay it in 2023. They will be paying their tax uh, duties from 2021, but they could definitely use it for that, even in 2023, but to pay 2021 taxes. Thank you, very clear response. Thank you. Alejandro Caed, you have a question, go ahead. Yes. Of Bicom CBS. The, um, this idea of uh, trading in the stock exchange, I thought that was still a bill that was not possible still to trade the CINAS at the stock, in the stock exchange. Is that, uh, is that already possible to do? I mean, or is it still being debated? <coughs> Hi, Alejandro, nice to, nice to talk to you. As you said, it's a decree that is already in the president's office our president has to sign it. We had, um, we thought that we were going to have it ready in November, but we are still waiting. We we want to have it passed this November. This year, we will be able to do automatic registration of these certificates in the stock exchange, in the Colombian stock exchange, and. Uh, once it's issued, it will immediately, it will be automatic. It will, once the SINA is issued, it will be automatically listed in the Colombian Stock Exchange. Thank you, Laura, for your response. We have another question by Camila Vilches. Wilches. Camila, go ahead. Uh, Camila is on mute. I'm from Sony Pictures and I have a question that is more regarding the logistics. Usually in the committee of project evaluation, they meet uh, the 15th of every month. That's when we apply for SINA. My question this year, what? when is the last committee that uh, meets? Is it gonna be in November or December? And next year, when do they, uh, when are you planning to begin again with these meetings? Hi, Camila. Correct. As a matter of fact, we've tried to have these meetings at, uh, around the 15th of every month. That's more or less the agenda of the 15 ministers. We're going to have a committee this month, in November. It's going to be uh, on November 18th. And I think that um, November, uh, January 18th or the 20th will be the next one. I don't have the confirmed dates yet. But without a doubt, we're going to have one committee meeting uh, in November and one in January. Um, uh, last year, la this year, we didn't have a meeting in January because we didn't have any projects to assess. But if we do have them in, in 2022, we will have a meeting uh, in January 2022. And I'm sorry, another quick question. They mentioned a committee that they have to bridge the gaps. Uh, is it possible to know how to be a part of that committee? Laura? Yes, that committee is, it was formed uh, three years ago. And I can I can send you more information if you want to, to explain how you can be a part of it. It's, uh, as I said, it's a committee that are three audiovisual producers and the president's office, uh, Pro Imagenes, and the Ministry of Culture. 
Okay, thank you. I'd love some information about that. Gracias, Sandra. Adelante. Thank you, Sandra. Go ahead, ask your question. Esta, esta es mute. You're on mute, Sandra. Okay, gracias, Sandra. Gracias. Okay, thank you. I'm also from Sony Pictures. Uh, Camila's, to Camila's question, we have a project um, before the end of the month and the SINA quota is very low. What happens if there are many projects and the quota that they're applying um, um, ex exceeds uh, the amount for this year? Can, can we use it next year? How, what is the priority to allocate that quota? Yes, as a matter of fact, we are very close to reaching that quota that the government, the Colombian government gave us for, for CINAS, to issue CINAS, which was 250 billion uh, Colombian pesos. In fact, I have um, some projects that are under evaluation that if they are approved, would uh, complete the quota for 2021. So a decision that this uh, film promoting uh, promotions uh, fund is we will evaluate all the projects and according to how pertinent they are, if they comply with the goals of law 1556, then the committee will say, okay, we're gonna pri give priorities and manage the situation Accordingly, projects may have not all the resources approved, but or or maybe they they don't get approved, and they uh, they will not be approved for the 2021 quota. But uh, we would tell them since that we don't have enough uh, money, the project was not approved by the committee. So come back and 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 present your project again in 2022. Thank you. And if you say, okay, there is a certain percentage that is allocated and I say, okay, no, I, I'd rather come back next year. Yeah, that's also a possibility. You ask us before we apply. Um, in that case, then you, we, won't, uh, we won't give you any, any feedback, as you know, in the process, they have to pay a, a, a surety bond, some sort of surety bond. So if they um, if they do it before the contract is signed, then you wouldn't have to pay for that um, sort of insurance that we get paid um, to evaluate the projects. Thank you very much. We want to know if there is any, we still have uh, two minutes, three minutes before we finish. Juan Carlos, go ahead. Hi, thank you very much for the presentation. It's nice to see you all again. My question is very simple. It has to do with the partial CINAs. Partial CINAs are treated the same way and they have the same term and deadlines um, uh, as the total payments, if you use CINAs to pay completely? Yes. What happens is CINA for the total amount will be in the name of the uh, foreign producer. And as the foreign producer sells and changes, changes the beneficiary of that certificate. So then the uh, account of the foreign producer goes down and that re those resources, those amounts go, go to the name of the beneficiary. So it's like a, a transference with the, between accounts, that's, that's all, but it works exactly the same. I don't know if Laura wants to add something about that. No, 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 that's, that's correct, Silvia. It applies for each one of the certificates, uh, you know, two years is the deadline you have to use it. And, and the transference is, is the same as Silvia explained. One last question in the chat, and then we will close. Is there an annual, an yearly limit in the value that is authorized by CINA? And if there is, um, how do you evaluate who gets that uh, limit? To date, the, the committee has not put a cap to the projects, but that committee 
has that authority, that power, the committee may set a cap for a project that will be informed in our website. But to date, we don't have a cap, um, a limit, a limited amount of money for um, for the cash rebates. We do have a, a limit uh, per project. So nowadays, no project can receive more than 2.6 million pesos. But it's worth noting that at this point, that uh, those that uh, fund is about to resource, and we only have 600 million pesos available. But we are welcome to get a small project to perhaps give that amount of money to. Thank you, Silvia. And with that, we'll close our Q and A's. Carla, I don't know if you want to do a wrap up for conclusions. Sure, I'd love to. Once again, Simon, Silvia, Laura, and please extend our uh, gratitude to Jaime for his time. I want to offer all the participants here that we, if there are any follow-up questions, we'll be very happy, even suggestions and recommendations. Um, if there are any suggestions to perhaps, um, you know, make the road uh, shorter, Laura, if you agree, Silvia, Simon, we can also pass those questions, uh, you know, according to the experiences that the movie studios have, and, you know, we can send you all the questions and recommendations. We are here for you. Let's continue communicating. And thanks, everybody, for attending this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carla. Thanks, everybody, for attending for your participation and we look forward to seeing you soon. We hope it's been useful and uh, I can't wait to see you again. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.